Oh. We are going to see a simple example about how to uh, make an implicit intent in this case camera and the gallery. Even though I named it as a camera app, it is going to host a uh, gallery option also to be called. 2.3, 2.2 as a minimum. So whatever the basics. Empty activity uh, creates that uh, simple activity without that floating uh, menu or whatever that. So in fact, we want that. So I'm just going to choose empty activity this time. Instead of blank activity, blank activity creates two XML files and a lot of things we need to clean it up. But instead of empty activity, if you select, it just creates the required one. So the activity main alone would be created. Okay, while it loads, I would like to make few things uh, clear. Remember, this is going to require access to your SD card. Because external files has to be cached or loaded from the SD card. Mostly your camera images or everything is an external storage. Not to confuse with the external storage SD card terminology what I am talking. It is not a purely a SD card scenario. Some phones may have a built-in storage. Like if you buy some phones which may not have SD card option but whereas it contains an additional storage. So for me the SD card in the sense anything the memory available for your apps to store or your any data which can be stored over there. So additional storage apart from the system storage. If you buy a Nexus phone it doesn't come with a SD card slot but it still contains with uh, 16 gigs or 32 gigs of memory or more than that. So assuming that is contained in such memory. So we are going to access them. So this particular example, I want to create uh, a form where user enters the personal details. Along with that, he also attaches his own image. So the form is going to contain some more data plus the image of the user. I hope that similar requirement could be mapped because one of the project command requirement I have given to store some sort of ID cards or something like that in your exam, I mean your project. So the similar requirement of which I am going to talk. The main purpose of this example is to discuss about how to call implicit intents plus create your customized adapter. Both the case I am going to cover. So let us see how we can proceed. External storage. Uh, all you need to know about the external storage you need a permission to access it because the privacy related and again uh, you should know about the file path and bitmap or so on so so certain, certain convention I am going to uh, teach you about this uh, in this example so make sure you pay attention to that. So before that I am um, assuming the main activity we can hold only a list view. We will create one more activity that is going to hold the form. So once the form is filled, we will bring back the data and populate a list view. So for design requirement, I am creating one more activity. Empty activity, form activity. I like this kind of clean, uh, you know, even though it is a hello word, whatever purpose you use it pretty clean, we don't have additional code, whatever required we will add it. So here I want to have the option menu, clicking option menu, let the user go back and add uh, the form. So on create option menu, on what do you call, on option menu select, on option item select. There is nothing not even menu folder. Let us create a directory called menu. Menu resource file. Uh, says main menu. So menu item, what are all the uh, icon if you want, you can keep it. Uh, 
title what you want to keep so let me keep add oh, something like that uh, uh, then what else we want ID of course we need ID Sorry. what else we may be requiring there is one important thing like you know action what is that can show us action I remember Hope. okay which does not require Android prefix I hope Let me bring it to from some other existing project because I just uh, need to know what is the convention. It is app. The naming convention should be added. What is the app? single item so I didn't specify any order I would recommend doing this kind of uh, do it from scratch level so that you will understand most of the features okay let's see whether it is called over here get menu inflator inflate R dot menu dot main menu. So let us run. Let's see whether that particular menu appears first. Then based on that we will decide. building it assuming when the menu item is clicked let it launch Start activity for result will come back to it if required. Of course, it will be required. Something going wrong terribly. May not be it's hard thing. Okay. So we have a add form link added. So when the user click on add form, he'll be taken to a next activity. There we are going to do various other additions. So I'm going to create a simple form. To make it simply, uh, I mean, uh, make it uh, easy for the example, I'm going to have only one edit text and maybe one placeholder for image. Multiple edit texts are possible. So make it, I prefer linear layout. Let's clear the core. Are padding 10 dp mm -hmm. orientation very important as far as linear layout otherwise the default one will be horizontal so that won't give us a required design what we are expecting okay let me add edit text
hope you know that convention we were following we have to move everything to a string resource file but since for example i'm not doing it maybe one more field we'll add one more thing for image so i'm going to add a image view which is going to hold an image mm, let me make it some 150 dp smaller one, I don't want to occupy the entire space but depending on your requirement so image icon we keep everything to a center pardon? where? Where? Uh, okay. Typo won't do much effect, but anyway, it is good to keep it. And finally, a button. Mm, make it a bigger button. I'm going to use a button called pick image. And one button for save. Hope we are done with the design. Any typo, any errors? Okay, let me identify any styles are missing. App theme is good. And what is the app theme? So everything looking fine for me. I like any so our theme is app theme uh, kind of this is only for preview it, it, it won't do any effect on your design because one of the design what we have added here that is going to be taking effect light dark action bar that is going to be taken okay let's first see them how it is running rendering Here, whatever the thing required, we will start initializing before it loads. is already installed okay the image which you are going to pick so this design the user will enter first name last name and we we'll click pick image where we need to give two choice one pick from camera another pick from a gallery so uh, anyone he will pick and the image will be captured or either picked from a gallery and that image should be brought back and added on the top and the user is going to be having an option to save it once he saves the item it comes back to this screen adds one entry as a list view so first name and a small thumbnail of the picture which was gone added so in this case everything is going to be customized so let's see how we can proceed on that first 
me. Maximize it. Okay, and we have an image view. What else we have? Button, I hope. One is pick image. Another one would be save. So event listener needed. So let me implement on click listener. One handling button clicks. Okay. So let us attach them. So pick image set on click listener set to this and save. So we understand the uh, event listener implementing this class itself. So event listener could be set like the keyword this. So if condition v dot get id matches with uh, So interface is ready. Now need to create a couple of first thing create a dialogue so that the user given a choice of either camera or uh, gallery. Launch dialogue some name. So alert dialogue this time the alert dialogue is slightly going to be different. The same way we created before. If you want to keep a title or anything, you can do. But here I'm going to give a choice to items. First one, camera. Second one being local gallery whatever name. oh yeah gallery you can keep it so instead of set uh, what we were doing before set positive and negative button this time i'm not going to set them instead i'm going to use set items the choice and the event handler for handling the choice the same thing but instead positive negative button two choices are going to come and make sure your builder is ready to be created and ready to be displayed. Previous example I wrote broke into a two, uh, two lines I just made it as a single line now. So when the pick image button is clicked the launch dialog option will be caught. So I will just press run. So which choice has been selected which can we can identify using the index is already available which equal to zero mean the first choice the second choice could be else or else if whatever okay here we are going to launch either camera or gallery before doing that we need to have a couple of permission that is very important the Android has undergoing various uh, changes. I was talking about there are a lot of uh, being things being evaluated. So let me see whether the dialog appears or not. So we have uh, two choice now. 
instead of uh, dialog ok cancel button I, I created just either the user click camera or local we need to take that we need to call the implicit intents to take the user to a different activity now so the dialog is ready the first one I am trying to access the camera the second I need to access the external storage so those permission I need to add in manifest user's permission find something to do with the camera BCC camera and another one Read, write external storage. Uh, first one being read external storage, and another one being write external storage. Both is uh, both required, even though the write contains the read option as well, but sometime. Uh, for example, you are trying to browse uh, the images which is there in the gallery, which is just a read option, which you are not going to write anything. So in that case, the read permission needed. The write permission with this file which you are going to create and write on the external device, like a camera. It's a new one. So better you have uh, both the information added, uh, both the permission added. And also, here comes Android modify the permission runtime permission option also added now that also I'll have it on board it is a built-in method called check self permission remember this one only available in marshmallow version and above so manifest permission read external storage if not given get package manager I hope permission granted this is a new addition in runtime also I can check whether the read external storage permission is given or not. If not, I can throw a dialog asking the user to grant the permission. So without that, the permission may not be uh, I mean, added to your application. This is uh, only for Android, Marshmallow and above. So better we add one condition. So build version. SDK intent uh, integer value version ports. So marshmallow and above alone this particular part will work. It is very important to add it because we are already adding a backward compatibility. So if you are testing on device which is not a marshmallow one, this particular line of code will throw an error. It's better to verify whether the device is running marshmallow and above. Above means in future it is going to come. So now grant permission. So grant permission we are going to see on this one. register okay, let me see what is the one to get okay. 
request request permission it is similar to on activity result where we can handle the permission so string permission and request code you need to give a request code as well so string should be a array and request code i'll just hard code it at this point so having this line of code for example i'll run it you will get to know what i am trying to do and couple of other permission also needed for your better clarity permission there are couple of other permission right external storage that's also needed so our code is launched now if you notice this one you are getting a dialog automatically allow camera app to access photo media files on your device if the user denies it at this point your application will not work because this particular application going to access camera and gallery this particular feature is available from marshmallow onwards so if you are testing on older devices make sure you put a condition this particular block is not executed for a lower end devices so in this example anyway i'm going to call allow let me add other permissions in fact you can handle them into one single this also possible start of writing as a separate one this is pretty easy instead of having one more line put one more extend yeah check permission with the one more option so assuming this permission is granted anyway i'm going to test it because my emulator does not have a uh, images built in so i'm going to test it on the device only but anyway these things will help let us start calling the camera and who oh, have added this one into a main activity anyway let me call it into a it's better to call this thing into a form activity because that's where the camera and other stuff is going to come okay. let's create one more method which will launch a camera intent it is all available media store action image capture if you if you call this particular uh, constant it will automatically build your intent it will launch your camera provided you have a permission an intent put extra we need to tell which file i am going to write the newly taken picture so media store extra output i need to give a uri of the location then we can handle it so uri i'll let you know how to build it star activity for result we need to know whether the image has arrived or not we we'll handle it little later first thing on activity result to handle the request code if request code one two three which is for camera and we'll also have a couple of lines added launch gallery in fact it is not gallery it will launch any application which holds an image for example uh, when you when you download picasso or some other application which can also hold the image so it will automatically create a choice and wherever the image is available 
you can call those intents. So there is an easy option. Set action. You get content. So we can automatically bring start for result. Create chooser. One, two, four. So in this case, remember which is a already existing image. So there is a action set mean it will alter it will automatically search through the implicit intent what are all the uh, intents are connected with the image that is very important we have been given the intent set type we need to tell the mime type like you know image star what are the thing related to image mime type you just go through wikipedia mime type various xml uh, various mime types are available so any uh, media input type you pick it in this case images whatever image type it will give me make it as a choice and display so let's put one more request code we have everything done but here i need to fill what is our uri and so let me launch launch camera for this choice and the one launch camera. time to connect my real device because emulator might not be having a lot of apps I have two camera app installed I have a, a couple of uh, built-in images everything available so I'm just going to screencast my device this is my real device so here I am going to install. So I am going to say that this device has a camera and everything. So let us see how it works. There is a Chrome extension available to screencast your device. You can install it. So extra output has to be defined, right? So okay. Let us create a path. Let me make it as a global private. URI identifier mm, image URI. This is the location I'm going to store all my images, whether local or uh, through taken through camera. Mm, sorry, this is save right. First, we will proceed with the as soon as the gallery picks an image, the data could be transferred to this image URI and then can be shown in the device. So, Remember the image will be available into a centralized database of your, for example, Android has a built-in uh, database engine which records all the image, uh, whatever being uh, stored, I mean whatever being taken using your device that is available through a content resolver. The content resolver is an index of all the items which is available in your uh, device. It can also have a database of your contact book has a database of a list of images a database of a videos everything it has so you all you need to give a path of a particular item and get back your data getting the instance get content resolver built-in method which is part of your activity now retrieve your bitmap bitmap raw image data because we are playing with the images here so content resolver It's already a choice, I hope. Okay. 
it is available in media yeah get bitmap content resolver and give the path some sort of exception need to be handled so all data especially on the image data available in the media store media store means the reference of all the images in your device so the image URI which is arrived from the gallery you will pick an image the path of the image will come and you are going to recreate the image and attach to your image view. what is the image view image view is not global I hope No, it's not global. So we'll display that. Set image with uh, display the fact. So all you are going to get a path of an image. Even though if you take a camera, camera will write the image into a specific path what you are going to give or if it is already existing path, you are going to bring the path from a gallery and once the path is arrived, you are going to call the content resolver, query the data, get the bitmap, display into your image. I have to add the camera but I finished that uh, what you call image, so let's see if it works. Close my emulator to save some memory. This time I'm installing on my phone. So I'm going to add form. I'm going to pick an image. So I have been given two choice over here, camera I had to add but now I let me add the local. See that application automatically went into a choice like you know I may have photos, images, gallery, various images I may have that I can pick it up and display in my phone but A2 so of course the image has been picked up but it's not displaying let us identify why. Okay. Okay, I only call the request code, I need to identify the result code, whether the item has been picked up correctly or not. So, there is a built in constant, if a result code equal to result ok, there is a built in constant if your choice is successfully picked up, if there is an extra value available, it will automatically call this one and of course I need to handle them, that is also I have done. So display image, once the image you are available, I need to query the database and display. So let us put that also. Remember result code we cannot add, previous example we were adding a result code in set result in the activity which was launched. But this in this case, it is the implicit activity which is outside of your application. You cannot define a result code. So there is a built-in result code. This is the result code always a camera or gallery will give you when successful pickup of a additional data. In this case, image. So let me reinstall one more time. Let's see whether it picks up an image from a gallery or not. So going to the form, going to pick an image, getting a choice. Now the app goes to a gallery. You can pick any image. 
So I'm going to pick this image, the image arrived and it's there in my application. So the image could be locally picked up, that image could be brought into your application. Remember I am not handling the raw data, I am only handling, handling the path of an image. Once the successful path is arrived, I decode it or I query it and get the back bitmap. So, I am not playing with the extensive amount of data, only the path. Once the path is successfully retrieved, I am going to uh, query that into a con content resolver, identify and get back the bitmap, attach it to the image view. Everywhere I will be playing in this way because if I have a reference to a path, I can even save them into my database. All I need a path of my image. So, this is how it works. For gallery, let us launch a camera. There is a fundamental difference between the camera and the gallery. Remember, for gallery, the path is already existing, mean the image is already there. Existing image only you are going to pick up. But whereas the camera, there is no image, the image is yet to be taken. So you have to define a path first. Let Android understand, okay, any images which is going to be taken will be written. The bitmap will be written on that path and then we can use it for our further reference. That's the reason the extra output I have to give. I need yeah. to tell output path of my image. So where that image is going to be so stored. So I need to create a path now. Here only that querying the SD card and other stuff is going to come. So I will create a method private. create for camera I make it as a get URI for camera whatever you will make it as a URI which is going to return null to start with then I will come back Okay. We'll have to always give a unique name. Let us create a directory in uh, SD card or in memory so that our images could be saved, always saved in that SD, uh, that particular folder. So let me create a directory. file expect the path and the folder name okay your sd card path can be retrieved using the api environment environment is a reference to your sd card external storage not the sd card better i say external storage because sd card should not come as an uh, idea like you know removable storage environment it's an external storage available, the path of uh, external storage uh, available in your phone. So get external storage public directory. Public directory means root directory most of the time, which is, uh, you know, once your uh, SD card you put it, the Android formats will create various folders, pictures, videos, and so on, so folder it will create. So I'm going to... directory pictures inside the picture I am going to expect a folder name mm. any folder name you can create so in this case I just created a folder name called dev app I am checking whether uh, this particular directory exists or not because chances are there the directory which is already there if not we have to create the directory so if exist if already exists okay better if not exists we'll create mkdi app for uh, uh, linux command line make directory so it will create the directory if the directory is already not there now we have to define the path where we are going to save our images a conventional uh, idea would be having a unique name always. So I am going to build a unique name, nothing but my timestamp value I am going to use because anytime when I take a picture, the millisecond value will be there so I can easily define a name. 
So let me get a calendar instance, today's date. Calendar get instance will give you an instance of particular timestamp or any time when you execute that particular time will be available, date, object or whatever it is. So I also need a date formatter, built in date formatter, a simple date format. Pattern, date, month, year, hour, minute, second. I'm just going to form it in this way based on English locale. Locale means language. We know Spanish may have a different one better. We define based on the English language date, month, year, hour, minute, seconds. So seconds will make sure any time when I call it, this particular line will be unique. So file name I'm going to build. Let me prefix simple date format format. better and make it as an image path. Prefixing img underscore the timestamp which is available dot jpg. So always this name will be unique for me. So that this is that to be taken image. So this file is just empty file is created when camera is launched it will write the bitmap in this file and we can retrieve it to display. So of course we haven't done it. Image path is ready. Image URI, the global object we have created already. URI from file. New file. First, we need to give a directory plus separated file separator. A path separator. Remember uh, Unix will have a backslash or Windows have a forward slash could be anything it is better you create your build your valid directory path in this way directory the very first directory where you are going to save your image and this is the image path what you have decided. So the URA is ready and return. So we have to have a empty file, empty image file created before calling the camera. So now call that. This is the only difference calling a camera. Uh, if it is a local directory, we don't need to do that because the file already exists. For getting an image from a camera, we have to make sure an empty file is created in a specific directory where we are going to we are where we are willing to write and there we create an empty file and give the uh, refer the image URI for your later use and I hope I'm done I need to handle it the image URI value already been assigned here so I don't need to define it I don't need to capture from a data then it will automatically go here and resolve to a ok done the file name for example I'm going to launch a camera here so once I click on the camera it gives me a choice because my phone has a two camera app okay let's pick one camera okay which is a camera picture which is already taking so assuming if I am taking a picture till the time an empty file is created once I click take a picture 
the entire bitmap will be written onto the image URI what we have just created. So the get URI for camera will be called immediately when the camera app is launched. So now, oh, sorry the orientation changed here. Okay. Now I am going to select OK. The image will be available in your phone. So you can use it to pick a picture from a local directory or through a camera and which one? I'll show you. I'll go to the directory. So assuming this image has been taken. Now let me find out where this image is being uh, stored. I have a file should be having an app. Okay, yes, file explorer I have. You will have a lot of apps so which you, you can browse through our files. So in this case I have this one. If you notice SD card public directory which I wrote uh, was pictures I remember uh, pictures yeah here inside it created a folder called dev app because this is what I gave so inside your image would have been used to retrieve the value I mean it is not updated but it will be there And this is something else. over here it is huh? okay it did not take effect anyway it is written here maybe it is not taking effect am I giving a right file directory okay anyway so I don't see any using in this case I'll let you know why it is writing on that uh, the directory but anyway it has to write in the specific folder because if you notice my couple of other application uh, which has written on the specific folder so these are all the application I use it for testing maybe for this one I don't know what is going on we'll identify what is that but anyway it is going to write into the specific folder and the image output will be taken forward to retry the data to display in your application. So let me go back. Where is my application? My camera. Okay, let me run it. So there is a difference between the local and the camera app. Camera app, the file path has to be decided first. And for gallery, it could be an existing one. So let me take it one more time. Let us take one more picture from a camera. So take a picture. So in this case, something else will take. So, anything? Okay, I'll have to check whether the back camera or front camera, front camera works at this case. But anyway, somehow we made it work. Let me pick an image locally from the gallery.
that will also be brought to your application. So the next example, what we are going to do here is we are going to save this one. So we are going to add a option uh, like you know enter some form detail and save it and bring the data to a list view. So that's a further addition we are going to do. Maybe afternoon if I have time I will write it. But this particular code is for your camera or local image retriever. I will upload the source code but this code is already available in that uh, website. But anyway I will upload this source code as well.